Well, it's good to be back in the Lord's house tonight. And, uh, it's good to have everyone uh, watching with us and and uh, praying with us here tonight. Uh, do uh, don't forget if you have a, uh, a shoe box out for the uh, uh, please uh, contact Floyd or somebody in the church, and we'll try to uh, make arrangements for you to drop those uh, shoe boxes off. I believe uh, there's a few still out yet, so don't forget that. Don't forget you can still um, uh, purchase a fuel, uh, uh, shoe box online. Uh, go to our Facebook page and you can do that as well. Uh, those are for Samaritan's Purse. Uh, don't forget if you have a food box, uh, you know, try to get that back next Sunday. Uh, Mike Anderson will be here from 9 to 12 on that day. And if you can't get out... Um, uh, to fill that box, get in, get in contact with someone. I'm, I'm sure we can find somebody that'd like to spend your money, and fill one of those boxes. So don't forget that. Uh, don't forget um, uh, uh, Wednesday night services. We'll be doing online again. Um, I do ask you to uh, continue to pray uh, for the needs of our church, uh, the needs in our community, and all those around us. Uh, you know, we're just trying to take a uh, few weeks here and kind of let numbers uh, hopefully get back down a little bit with our COVID cases in our area. Uh, so continue to pray for our health workers and nurses and doctors and all those that uh, on the, I guess you call the front lines of that work. Uh, continue to remember the lost when you pray. Uh, you know, we sometimes we get uh, hung up in the things that, you know, that we're praying for ourselves and and that's okay, but we don't need to forget uh, the lost when we pray. Um, remember those that are recovering from surgeries. We have several out um, uh, for surgeries and different things that they're recovering from. Uh, so continue to remember them. Uh, I have some unspoken requests, and, and I know many of you in our church has needs and requests tonight. Uh, the Lord knows all about them requests, so uh, we will uh, continue to remember those with one another. If you, if you have your Bibles and you want to follow along with us tonight, um, uh, I want us to turn to Proverbs chapter 3. And uh, Proverbs chapter number 3 tonight. And I want to share with you a thought uh, that we've had on our heart for some time and, and been praying about. Um, Proverbs chapter 3. Now... We also, uh, we will, uh, a couple places in the New Testament we will be in as well if the Lord allows us to get there. Um, uh, so we may be uh, in Romans uh, 16, not Romans 16, uh, Acts chapter 16, uh, Ephesians 6 and James chapter 5. We may get there, a uh, few uh, verses we'll look at there tonight. But the, our main thought that's come to us um, uh, through reading and praying, and uh, we're going to get from Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses 5 and 6. If, um, if, you, ever, if you ever have extra time and you want to uh, uh, study and read a little bit, uh, the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes is a very good read um, uh, for you that uh, if you want to... Uh, Learn some things, you know, uh, when you're dealing with Solomon and, and where he had uh, written these books, um, you know, probably nobody had as much as Solomon, uh, the knowledge that he had uh, and all those different things. Um, you, can, you can read about that in Ecclesiastes. But it, um, when you look in verses 4 and 5 out of Proverbs, um, you know, when you're dealing with Solomon, him being David's son and being the king, uh, you know, um, he, uh, he, like I said, material-wise, I don't think anybody had any more material than he did. Um, the wisdom, the knowledge, um, the things that he had, there's a lot that we can learn from when it comes to Solomon. When you read in these scriptures here in verses 5 and 6, these are um, very important uh, two verses and, you know, and, and when I read these and began to think about them, um, you know, I, I think that's something that, that every one of us uh, as Christians, um, you know, when I, when I got saved, 
uh, there were some things that just automatically happened, okay? Um, you know, he, he instantly filled my heart with joy. He instantly filled me with a peace that was uh, beyond anything that I had ever felt before. Uh, filled me with his spirit, filled me with his presence and his love. Um, but yeah, there's other things that, that come along with that. And when you look in verses 5 and 6, we will cover one of those here tonight. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not uh, unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Let us pray. Dear my Father, we come to you in prayer tonight. Thanking you, Lord, for this opportunity, God, that you've given us to come together tonight uh, so that we can worship, uh, Lord, together with you. And, Lord, as we pray tonight, we just pray that, God, that these, these scriptures and these thoughts and examples, God, that you've laid up on our heart, Lord, I pray that it would be a help and a blessing to all of those that are watching and listening, God, to this service. Lord, I just pray tonight that most important prayer, if there's someone, Lord, that is watching uh, that doesn't that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior. They've never been saved. Lord, we pray that, uh, Lord, that it would just uh, bring uh, help into their life, hope into their life, that they'd put their faith and trust in you. Lord, maybe someone's watching or listening tonight. God, Lord, they've got so many things going on in their life. And, Lord, they're, they're just uh, things, God, that just comes upon us at, at times. Lord, there's just things that just, uh, Lord, just comes in our life and it disturbs and uh, disrupts and uh, Lord it just it just distracts Lord sometimes uh, things just don't go the way that we expect them to go and Lord we uh, pray tonight as we look in this scripture and we see this uh, verse here that Solomon had written Lord that we could uh, we could learn a few things tonight Lord I just pray that you would help uh, God the church to grow we just help us to grow in your word and Help us to grow in faith and help us to grow in trust and love. Help us, God, in our community and help us, Lord, as, as individuals, God, just to uh, just have our faith and trust in you. And, Lord, tonight as we pray, we just lift the church up to you and lift all those up, God, that has a need in their life. Lord, we want to thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Chris and Mike were aggravating me tonight about uh, he said, well, you gave us this verse to put on the website, and we'll end up somewhere else, and, and uh, that's true, that's true. If you have your Bibles open tonight, and you want to read um, uh, just a verse or two, uh, we're going to take a thought here out of James chapter 5, James chapter 5, and we will come back uh, to Proverbs, uh, James chapter 5, in verse 13 I want you to notice uh, what the Bible says. He says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now notice in verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. He had flesh just like you and I tonight. And he prayed earnestly, and that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And the Bible says, and he prayed again, and the, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now, when you think about these verses here that we read in James, if you noticed in verse 13, it let out... Uh, in the very first part in a question, is any among you afflicted? Now, for just a moment, I want to I wanna, uh, share with you some thoughts that, we, that the Lord has laid on our heart uh, here tonight. And then we're going to jump back into Proverbs. And, and when you look at the, uh, the definition to being afflicted, 
uh, to be afflicted, it, it means this. It means to have uh, pain, uh, suffering, or trouble. And we, we all, every single one of us tonight, uh, we could lift our hands and say there's times in our lives where we have been afflicted. Uh, Brother Mike, you could raise your hand tonight. Chris could. I could tonight. Uh, there's been times that uh, in affliction that, uh, you know, that a as a Christian you go through and sometimes uh, there's a times of affliction you've been through them and you've made it through. Uh, I guess in our thought tonight is those times they come and they go. But the, the one of the, the aspects of that affliction that I want to point out tonight that uh, there's uh, there, it, the affliction may be the same, uh, but going through affliction is a lot different for a Christian uh, than someone that is lost. And, you know, and I, and I tell you, you know, it, it's amazing that uh, after I got saved, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, uh, you've heard that term being on cloud nine. I was on cloud 19, okay? I was higher than cloud nine because that was the greatest experience of my entire life happened in that night. And, and you know, and I, I mean, things were going good. And, and you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a short time after that. And then, and then man, I, I just felt like I was being afflicted on every hand. It seemed like uh, the devil was working on me harder than he had ever worked before. And, you know, it just seemed, it seemed like the fight was on, okay? And, and you know, and, and, you know and, it, and, it, and I struggled. I really did for months after my salvation. And, and it got to the point that even Laurie had noticed it. And uh, she's wondering what was going on. And, you know, and I, I just wasn't brave enough to tell her. But, you know, I guess I, I should have told her and I should have asked for her prayers and, and her help in that time. Uh, but one thing that I learned uh, uh, in that time of affliction, and you know, and, and the, the thing about it is, I can now look at that, uh, and it's behind me, okay? It's not in front of me anymore, because I've made it through that affliction. And, and you know, and there's been times uh, in my Christian life, and, and you know, even, even the short time I've been here at Maple Grove, you know, there's been afflictions that's come up, but you know what? I can say to you tonight, those things are behind me, all right? And I'm just going to keep motoring on and keep going forward. But I guess one thing I learned in that first uh, time of affliction after I was saved is, you know what, I learned this one thing. There, it wasn't something I could work out, Mike. It's something I could not control. It was something that was far uh, bigger than I was. It was something far greater than anything that I could do. And you say, preacher, what did you do? I, I tell you, I learned to do this not knowing that I was learning to do it, okay? that You know, that, that's a mouthful just being said. Uh, but what I learned is, is that in this affliction, and I'm not talking it was some great big thing, uh, but it was, it was personal. And you know, I learned this, that I had to trust the Lord. I I had to learn to trust what he was telling me in the scriptures. I had to learn how, how to pray. And you say, preacher, how do you pray? Well, let me just put it this way. This way. Just talk to the Lord. That's all it is. Uh, it's not hard. It, it's not some uh, big, long process. It, uh, listen, he's not, he's, not, uh, he, uh, he, he's not moved by how you say words. Uh, he's moved by you saying words, okay? Uh, he's not impressed uh, about those big words that people say sometimes. Uh, it touches his heart uh, when you speak from your heart. Uh, and you know what? I, I found that in that process, and I didn't even realize I was doing it, I was learning to lean on Jesus. And you know, and I guess that's our thought for tonight. I don't have verses or titles that I try to give these guys. But you know, I guess in that process, I was learning to lean on Jesus. Amen. Amen. I, and I tell you what, I, uh, you know what, I, I could just about run right now. Amen. Because uh, of, of, of how good it feels. Uh, and you know, I, and I guess the best way I could put that to you you say, preacher, how did you learn to lean? Uh, well, listen, uh, the difference between being lost and saved uh, in affliction was this. Uh, 
uh, if you're a lost person and you don't know the Lord in that and you're going through affliction, uh, let me tell you something. You're alone tonight. Uh, uh, there's nobody with you. You say, preacher, I've got my wife, my kids, I've got my husband, my family with me. Listen, if you're lost, you're alone. Uh, you don't have anybody. Uh, but the difference is if you're saved, uh, you've got Jesus with you no matter where you're going. Uh, so here I am. Uh, I'm in the process uh, of going through this affliction. Uh, and you know, I'm, it, it, it was affecting me on the job. Uh, it was affecting me at home. Uh, it was affecting me even in church. Uh, but you know what? I learned this. Uh, uh, even though I'm going through it, uh, I've got my best friend right there with me, Mike. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, and you know, here's the thing. Uh, he never left me. Uh, he never talked about me. He, he never put me down. Uh, and through this process, and uh, you know what I was doing? I was learning to lean on Jesus. I, uh, there, that song, I, I believe it may be in, it's either the church hymnal or the Baptist hymnal I, or one or the other. I, and if you think about that song, I, it's a process. I, it says learning I, to lean on Jesus. Now, I want to give you an example of learning I, uh, to lean on Jesus. I, you know, I, I don't know about you, but uh, in, uh, since I've gotten older, I don't like heights. I, uh, we, we went on vacation just a, a, a few a uh, few weeks ago and, and man they put us on the top floor and I did not like that but that's the only room they had huh? and you know what I'm telling you from 14 floors up when you get close to the edge it gets scary Mike I don't like that huh? uh, the kids would walk out there and they'd lean on that rail and I'm like Lord have mercy you know man designed it man built it man maintained it that thing could break huh? and you know what I scared to death this is what I do I, when I'd go out there, I'd put my arms on it like this, okay? I didn't want to lean on that thing because I know it had the opportunity to break. Uh, and you know what I'd done? Uh, I was wanting to make sure that it was sound uh, and solid. Uh, I pushed on it a little bit. Uh, I pulled on it a little bit. Uh, I was testing its strength uh, to see, to make sure uh, that it was something that we could lean on. Uh, it's like tying a knot in a rope. Uh, you put that rope around a tree or or you throw it over a, a, a joist or something like that and you tie the knot huh? and you know what before you pull yourself up you know what you do you give it a little tug huh? you give it a little pull huh? and what you're doing you're learning huh? in that process of that tug and test huh? you're learning that you can trust huh? that knot and that rope huh? it's a process huh? and when I was going through that affliction in hand you know what it was a process uh, that God was using uh, so that I could learn uh, to trust Him. I learned uh, to know that you know what? Uh, I can lean on Him. Uh, when you think about that verse uh, uh, when in Proverbs uh, uh, when Solomon uh, he said lean not on your own understanding. Uh, listen it was a process uh, that he went through uh, uh, so that he could share that uh, with you and I tonight. Listen uh, I believe believe the Apostle Paul. Huh? You know what? When God spoke to his heart huh? and he surrendered unto him, huh? he was saved. Huh? But I believe the old boy had to learn uh, to lean on Jesus. Huh? You say, preacher, how do you know that? Huh? The Bible doesn't say. Huh? It's a process huh? of trusting and faith and learning. Huh? Uh, think about this. Huh? You say, preacher, what about that affliction? Huh? The Bible teaches us over in Acts chapter 16 huh? how that Paul and Silas uh, uh, was beaten and thrust uh, into the innermost part of the prison. Uh, uh, they were chained and bonded together in that. Uh, you say, preacher, was that affliction? Yes, but you know what? They wasn't alone. Uh, you say, preacher, how in the world uh, could they sing songs uh, and praise the name of Jesus uh, uh, through what they're going through? Uh, it's because uh, uh, they learned uh, uh, through life in that that they could trust Him, uh, that they could lean on him huh? and that they could put their faith in him. Huh? Uh, notice this. Uh, look in verse 13 out of James chapter 5. It says, Is any merry? Uh, let him uh, sing songs. Uh, you know what? There's times uh, 
in our life uh, when we get afflicted. There's times in our life when we get down. Uh, listen, I know uh, it, it may be a process of learning. Uh, it may be a process of trusting the Lord. Uh, but notice this. If you're saved tonight, you're never alone. Uh, if a person is lost uh, and you're going through something in that, listen, uh, the best advice I can give you in that is trust Jesus. Amen. Uh, and you know what? He'll always be there uh, for you no matter what's going on. Uh, you let bad trouble come around. Uh, friends will run off. Ain't that right, Mike? Uh, you let bad trouble run around. Sometimes family uh, will leave you empty handed. Hey, Amen. Uh, they'll do that. Uh, you let bad times come around. Uh, the company you work for, they'll lay you off. Uh, you let bad times come around. Uh, the hospital uh, uh, may kick you out. Uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, Jesus ain't never kicked out nobody. Uh, uh, Jesus ain't never fired nobody. Uh, uh, Jesus ain't never talked about nobody. He's always been there for you and I. Think about this. Many of you, if you've not ever noticed this, but I lean on a lot of things. Whether I'm at work, uh, whether I'm at home, uh, whether I'm, if I'm out shopping, I don't shop, I go with the shopper, okay? I find me something to lean on because I know it's going to be a long process. If you've ever noticed something about me, what I'm doing, when I'm leaning on something, even when I'm preaching from the pulpit, I'm actually leaning on the pulpit. And, and what I'm doing, I'm trying to find relief. I have back pain and back problems. And you know, and what I've learned that when I lean on something else, I'm allowing what I'm leaning on uh, to bear the load. Yeah. You know, I, it's a process of learning to lean on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because he is the one that could carry the load. I, I, was, I was thinking about in the scriptures. How that when he was bearing his cross. And he got to that point to where he could no longer bear that cross. And you know what? And you say preacher was that cross heavy? Listen. The cross wasn't that heavy. But the load of sin was heavy. And what he was carrying was my sin. What he was carrying was my load. And you know what? And only he could carry it in that. When you think about it in life sometimes, uh, you know what? If, if you've been through affliction, let me tell you this. Jesus has carried you. You may not have realized it, but he's carried you. If you've not been through it and you're fixing to go through it, I want to tell you tonight, Jesus will carry you through. Uh, uh, just learn to lean on him. Uh, and you say, preacher, what happened in that time of, uh, in your life when you were afflicted? Uh, i tell you what I learned. Uh, I learned that I needed to pray more. Uh, I learned that I needed to talk to him more. I learned that I needed uh, to read the Bible more and study more. And you know what? And through that process, uh, I was learning to lean on him. Uh, and you say, preacher, what, what did you learn? I, I learned scriptures. I, I learned the truth. I, I learned that when nobody, when I couldn't count on nobody else, I, I could count on him. I, you know what? There's times in our lives I, we want to count on somebody, I, and we need to. I, that's what the church is for. I, I, we need to count on the church. I, we need to count on family and friends. I, we need to count on our loved ones, I, and that's good. I, but sometimes the best intentions will let somebody down. I, we're all guilty of that. Uh, but my Lord and Savior has never let me down. Amen. Although that I failed him many times. I wonder. When you go back and you look in Proverbs. Chapter number three. And you read. These two verses. I wonder what the process was for Solomon. That taught him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. I wonder what the process was. For him to lean not on thine own understanding. But to lean on him. I wonder what, he, what, what the process was. In all thy ways acknowledge him. I wonder what the process was. For Solomon to learn. 
He shall direct thy paths. You know, I've, I've found that even the map makers across the country, you know, used to, you didn't have uh, the GPS system. You had to go to the bookstore or Walmart or the gas station. You had to get a map or an atlas. Had every map in the country. And you know, sometimes they got it wrong, okay? Sometimes when I, I remember when those first uh, GPS systems come out, you know, I had to go to Michigan one time, a long time ago from work, when they first came out, one of the first cars, it, it was an option when you went to the rental car company, do you want a GPS system? I said, yeah, sign me up for that. When they put it on the dash and plugged it in the cigarette lighter, I punched in the address and that, and it took us in the opposite direction. The, boy, the engineer I was with, uh, he said, I don't think we're going the right way. I said, you know, I don't know because I've never been here before. And you know what? We're going in the wrong direction. I remember when MapQuest came out, okay? You could go in. You could, you could give it your starting destination and your final destination. I almost ended up in jail over Oak Ridge, okay? I got on a road I wasn't supposed to be on. <laughs> it was a private road. Even in your phone, sometimes it will give you the wrong directions. Had a couple in church. They were watching this. Love you to death. But they were out west traveling traveling down the road and all of a sudden the road just ended okay and it was telling them to keep going on but if they had to keep going on they had to run off a cliff so you got to be careful where you put your faith and trust in men makes mistakes okay but Solomon learned he shall direct thy paths you know the paths that he lays in front of us Preaching the mic here. He's my amen corner. <laughs> you know, those paths that he lays out for us, Mike. You know, that path is the right way because he's the one that built it. You can trust that path. And you can trust him. Maybe tonight, wherever you're at, you're in a process of learning to lean on Jesus. You know, I, I, have to, I have to imagine in my mind, you know, the Apostle Paul, I believe he had to learn how to lean. I believe these great preachers that's been around our country, even the preachers in our community that's been around for years and preached, I believe tonight if we got them up here tonight and asked them to testify a little bit, they'd probably tell you they had to learn to lean on Jesus. You know what? In the last week they I told you I, I got plumb upset Thursday afternoon just something just got to me and you know what and through that process I've had to learn Mike to lean on Jesus there's going to be those times it just it just pops up and it catches you it just sometimes it it just it just catch it just catches you at the wrong time okay and what I can tell you tonight learn to lean on him let us pray tonight Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer tonight, thanking you, Lord, for your presence here tonight. So thankful, Lord, for your word. So thankful, God, for uh, the scriptures and how it can guide us and direct us. Lord, how that it teaches us to be saved. It teaches us, God, that we can, we can truly put our faith and trust in you. That we fully can lean up on you in all circumstances, Lord. We pray tonight for the lost. We pray, God, for those that has needs. We pray, God, for the church and the community. We pray, God, for our country and the world around us, God. We pray for all of those, God, that's suffering with the virus. And we pray for the doctors and the people, God, that are working and taking care and providing health care to all of, of those in need. But, Lord, tonight as we pray, God, help the church, help our community, help us all, Lord, to learn to lean on you. God, as we pray tonight and as we go out these doors, Lord, I want to thank you, God, for, my, for, for saving my life. I want to thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I want to thank you tonight, Lord, that you've been a, you've been a rock, Lord, when I've needed one. You've, you've been the sound, the sound foundation, Lord, when, I, when things are moving and crumbling around that I can always lean on. Lord, we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't forget Wednesday night service. Uh, we'll do it online. And uh, don't forget the food box coming up. And, uh, don't forget the uh, uh, 
a shoebox. If you've still got one out, you can get a hold of Floyd or someone, and he'll meet you here at church. Good night. God bless.